everyone, and welcome to Couch Creations Live, where tonight I am going to show you how to take an oversized wreath. This one's a 36 inch wreath that you would use outdoors, um, whether you put it above your, what do they call it, like the little peaks. Um, this is where this wreath used to reside for many years. Um, subsequently, it needs a whole new look because it no longer fits with our outdoor decor and it's just hideous, let's be honest. Um, I have lots of people say, oh, but the wreath, uh, the bow's pretty. Um, it depends on which way you're looking at it. If I look at it this way, it's hideous. So, um, we are going to deconstruct the whole thing and give it a whole new makeover. And I hope you like what we're going to do with this. This wreath... I wish I could have told you about how long ago it's been. Um, I know it's been a while, like over 10 years. Let's just go with that, over 10 years old. So we're gonna give it some new life. Um, it's pretty faded. It's no longer like a deep evergreen now. It's more like a blue color, which is normal for evergreens to kind of turn a little blue color as they start to fade. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is start taking this apart. Um, I am not going to save my ribbon, so I'm going to take that off first. So there is a two and a half inch ribbon that runs all the way through this. So oh, as you guys... Said, that was a hideous haha. -ha. I saw people buy something like that today. <laughs> Sadly, I know. Um, and this one's actually going to make quite a bit of a mess because it is so old. So we're just going to give new life. So. What I'm showing you is, let's say, for example, you went to Goodwill or Salvation Army and you found something like this. I want you to be able to look at it with a different eye and say, I can redo that. I can repurpose that into something amazing, even though it's faded. Um, I'm just going to cut this. So I'm just going to try to untie um, this from where it's at. We're just going to cut it off um, and remove the bow, which is tied into our tree. Or, or wreath. You have to be careful because this wreath does include lights and um, before we start to decorate it we need to double check the lights still work. So, um... Hi gals. Anna, thank you for sending out your stars. Yes, thank you guys for the stars. I, I need to also include that in giving you guys updates. This one does have built-in pine cones but we're going to take those out because um, they're wired in. It doesn't go with a theme we are cutting with. So those will get repurposed. You know, we can always use the pine cones in other designs. So the first thing, take out all the stuff you don't want, or even the stuff you might want, um, throwing away some of these. We will use, we're going to reuse some of the balls, some, I don't think I'm going to use the green ones, but the red ones possibly. Um, and I can't wait to show you what this will look like when it's done. So I was tempted to take apart the whole thing before we started the lab. And I was like, no, I really wanted you to see what it looked like before so that when we finish, it'll be like, wow. Um, that's a big, huge change. And I don't think this one was ever fluffed, to be totally honest. This one, like I said, it went at the top peak of our old house. Old house. Um, never threw it away, probably because I was like, hey, one day I'll remake that. Mm. Today's that day. So we've taken it outside, or Steve did this morning. And... Uh, blue it out with the, the whatever you blow it out with so we're throwing all the cinnamon sticks away since they've been up there for 10 years I really don't think they're gonna smell very nice they probably don't have any smell left in them do you guys have old wreaths that maybe you might have gotten from Costco years ago that's usually what i get is they get a lot of people's old costco wreaths that they want to redo and costco glues everything in 
on their wreaths. So it makes deconstructing them challenging because you have to kind of cut everything out. And these pine cones are actually pretty good considering that they've gone through snow. Um, what if I wear this one? It's wired in. They've made it through snow, through rain. Um, when we don't get uh, snow and rain and just unusually hot uh, Decembers, so we're almost done deconstructing the whole thing. Just a couple more. Couple more pine cones. I always thought, how challenging is it to wire in a pine cone rather than glue them in, but yeah, some of these are so weathered that they're actually starting to peel and fade. So I am attempting to get the last ornament base out of here. There we go. We'll keep that one. And one more pine cone right here. Thank God you blew this out. I'm afraid we're going to have half of the evergreen pieces all over the floor. There we go. That one just did not want to come out. Okay, so we got to test the lights. Here's the plug. As I always keep the plug hidden on the underside. Mm -hmm. So lights all work. Everything works all the way around. It's kind of like a warm Christmas light. So that's a good thing. We don't have to rerun the lights. But as you guys know, the first thing you need to do when you're doing any type of wreath, this is still dusty because it's been so long, is you got to give it a good fluff. So I'm going to go around and pull all those branches out because right now it looks pretty flat and pretty ugly. So most of the time back in that day, I didn't realize you needed to fluff and to fluff it means physically touch every branch on that wreath and pull them apart, give them life. Hey, here's another pine cone. Karen said she recreated the wreath on the door. Oh, nice. And someone already wants to buy it. Thank you for your wonderful teaching. Good. I am so glad. That's an awesome thing to do. So, yes, you are more than welcome. She also she had an old garland that she redid it for fall. See? And you guys are starting to understand you don't just need to use uh, the garland. Like, you don't have to use this for Christmas. If you had one of these and you wanted to repurpose it and turn it into a gorgeous fall wreath, we now know evergreens can be a great base for that. So let's get through. And then Valerie said she also bought some on the marketplace. Uh, a block and in great shape. As far as the wreaths? The wreaths, yeah. Nice. Thank you all. Love your white scissors. I have a need for a good one. If you need to cut my wire ribbons, can you suggest one? Scissors? Yeah. Uh, doll go to Dollar Tree and go into their kitchen section and buy their Betty Crocker scissors. It's what I use. Um, because they only cost a dollar. I and five. Yeah, you can buy like five, and you'll be good for like two years. And now I think they're like a dollar twenty-five. Yeah, they might be a little bit more, but I'd rather use those to cut my wired ribbon than my good scissors to do that. See, we have branches going every which way. Poor thing. It needs some love even though it's shedding an awful lot, I feel like it's gonna, it's gonna have a good look by the time we're all finished. We're gonna need a serious vacuum at the end of this. I'm glad I did not vacuum today. It's gonna be all over the floor. So, give these all new life. 
Melissa, I actually used our grass blower. <laughs> I just took it outside and took the blower to it, all inside and out. Got in really close. You could also use a shop vac and put it on the blower side. Yeah, if your husband has an air compressor and they yeah. have the blower, put the nozzle on it and give it a good... Take it outside, though, because it's going to be... Yeah. If yours is as old as ours, it's going to need to be really blown out well. And the reason why we're doing this is because when we come into outer embellishments, we're going to be using some of the evergreen to help um, give it a new look. It almost doesn't even fit on my mat. It's literally taking up the entire length of my mat. Here's an old zip tie. That was probably used at one point to hold it up. I never got around to that. It's always good too to keep hand lotion on hand that when you start doing a lot of the evergreens it really takes a lot of moisture out of your hands and your arms um, so you could wear a pair of old winter gloves when you do this um, so that you know you're not dealing with 10 years old worth of stuff inside your wreath um, but just make sure you moisturize your hands really well afterwards Get this one up and over where it should be. So this is meant to be strictly outdoors. Now, if you guys have been with me for a while, you know that I have done the science experiment to test the durability of mesh, to test the durability of ribbon, to test the durability of the different types of wreaths that are out there. Because we live in a desert, we have those extremes. We have the extreme cold, we have the constant heat. Um, what else? We have the snow, we have the rain, we have a little bit of everything. So to really test products, to test deco mesh methods, to test ribbon, how well do they um, you know, hold up? Should you really invest in you know, UV spray? We did an experiment last year ran it for the full year. We started it in January. We basically took a 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath frame, um, loaded it filled with multiple colors of deco mesh wreath or deco mesh, um, different colors, different methods. You know, we did some curled, some ruffled, some cruffled. Um, we did high foil, low foil, basic mesh, uh, jute mesh, burlap, um, wired ribbon, and two and a half inch, one and a half inch, different colors. So we were looking to see what colors fade first. Uh, what really holds up? Is there a better method if you're building an outdoor wreath like this? Because it's geared specifically for being ignored for the season. Um, so dark colors will fade more noticeably than lighter colors. So if you have red, that's usually the first color to go. Greens will fade to a blue. Um, you can buy the UV protectant spray, um, but it requires you to reapply that every six weeks to really be effective. And it's not gonna be 100% anyway. Nothing is. You know, don't let someone tell you that if you put this stuff on your wreath that's guaranteed to last forever, it's not. Um, you know, you can have a waterproof jacket and just because it's waterproof doesn't mean it's geared to, you know, last in the rain 24 seven. Um, but the darker colors will fade more noticeably. Um, the more basic, the deco mesh is, the quicker it'll disintegrate. Um, Curls did better, I think, overall, because you're bunching that in a tight coil. So, you know, if you lost some of the outer layers, it was not a big deal. Um, but if you're looking for durability, um, you know, kind of choose wisely what method you want to do. Like this one, we're doing an evergreen base. 
because um, obviously this held up for 10 full years. Um, it's got some life in it. I wouldn't toss this and start all over again with something else, even though it looks like the day after Christmas when you buy a real tree below me, it's like greenery everywhere. But it's because we're going through and taking the time to really reflect this. Okay. So some of these are bunched down. They were never, ever lifted up. Half of them are still bent, probably in the position. You know, because when you buy a wreath out of a box, you just pull it out of the box and put it up. You don't think, oh, I should probably fluff that. Yeah, I thought it was just using the deck owners that you're using to make <clears throat> for 45 angles for a nursing home. Nice. Five minutes for me, a gift for me and my family for the holidays. That's so wonderful. You're going to be blessed far beyond measure by um, the people that receive that. What a huge um, thing to do. What a difference, right, when you fluff that thing out. <laughs> yeah, like it looked consolidated and um, lifeless, and now we can physically see just how big this is. So, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm adding, this whole thing is candy cane themed. What? One thing I can suggest is mm -hmm. that we define the plug, and that will need to be the top. Right? Okay. Because we're gonna plug it in. But yeah, I don't need to do it right now. Yeah. But thank you for that. He's like, well, have to have the plug at the top so wherever your top is make sure the plug is up at the top I'm like okay got it um so i am taking deco mesh cut in 15 and 20 inch pieces i started off doing 15 um so we're just going to ruffle and because this is a evergreen base we're going to apply to the inside and to the outside so i'm going to go around and do all the outside first and then I'm gonna come back and pop some inside pieces. Um, so I have, I wanna say like 24, 25 different pieces. So we shall see how well this all works. Um, why did I cut some 15? Cause originally I was just going to, I, I didn't think 26 or 36 inches. I was thinking 14 inch wreath frame. And I'm like, what am I doing cutting so many? And I was like, I have a 36 inch wreath form, which is double what we normally do. Mm -hmm. And with evergreens, you've got that scratchy metal frame. So I don't want to completely cover it. I just want to like every so often add a pop of this mesh so that it makes sense. Yeah, when we start. Have you put lights on your wreath before and does it show up good? Yes, it shows up really well. So, especially on this, I think it's going to, the this way, well, the way that it was done before, not being fluffed, yeah. um, you couldn't really see the lights because everything was so compacted. So we're kind of using this like a giant work frame. Okay, let's make sure this is way out of the way for now because we'll be using our glue skillet quite a bit. This is another great reason to fluff is so you can find all your evergreen. You know, you know right where to place your, your mesh at. And this is overly clingy mesh. Um, the mesh is from Craft Outlet. And like I said, you can get the 36 inch wreaths anywhere. Um, Hobby Lobby probably has a really great price on those. I just don't know off the top of my head. I know they're 24 inches are $11.99, so probably not much more. And then you also want to consider the fact the only thing that people are going to see is the very front and the very bottom of the wreath. 
They're not going to see the top. They're not going to see the little embellishments you might, you know, tuck around the sides. It's just going to be more for the visual. I really wish this slid better, but it doesn't. So if you guys like this video and you want to replicate something similar, um, once you get all your supplies, or maybe just, you know, you might have most of them, you just need that 36 inch, you were thinking, oh, I didn't really know how to decorate a bigger wreath. You know, I've always thought about putting one up in our house. And um, just click the share button on the bottom. It will put this video on your page, and that will be much easier to find rather than trying to locate it on mine. Oops. Okay, we've got two more pieces to add to the outside, and then I'll tell you how many outside ones we did. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell you, okay, well, you're gonna need X a number of pieces for the inside, X number of pieces for the outside. I haven't done one this big. I've been asked to do them this big, but shipping would be a nightmare. As you guys all know, shipping a 36 inch wreath would not be inexpensive. It'd be very expensive. These are more like your local ones. So let me tell you how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten pieces to the outside. And now we're gonna do to the inside. This will kind of help cut down on that blue green look and give it more of a festive candy cane look. So these are gonna be more to the top, kind of inside a little bit. More to the top though. And I'm gonna try to do these in between all the other pieces. So in between all the slots. We'll do one right here. Have you guys ever added deco mesh to an evergreen base before? YouTubers, feel free to respond because you'll be watching this. This is a video from Friday, November the 12th of the year 2021. So if you're catching this, it's a current video. And um, I do get back to you on your comments. So we're just doing the ruffle technique. And on this particular wreath, I'm not so concerned with, do I add it to the inside, the finished outside? Um, how am I placing my pieces? I'm just lightly covering my base. That's a new finish. That's going to be huge. I probably couldn't lift it. It's heavy as it is, yeah. but all the things that I'm adding to it are lightweight. I put it in there how many inches the, cut, the mesh was cut to. Um, some pieces I've cut to 15 and others I've cut to 20. So I'm kind of like toggling back and forth between um, short pieces and, and mm -hmm. more fuller pieces. For the downside, I did two 35 inch evergreen wreaths, one with a snowman and one with a leopard print. And Ooh. You came out beautifully. That sounds cool. Yeah, it does sound really pretty. Wow. Cheryl said she already has her tree up. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, no. We're putting our lights up starting tomorrow, so that's the reason why we need to get the, uh, pull out the old grandfather uh, wreath. You know, I'm like, should we go buy another one? Nah, let's just redo that one. That'll be a good, fun redo. Yeah, so no more plates of tiny, no rope wreath, a small fake one. Not even like a pencil tree? Yeah, like, a really thin one. yeah, I love the new pencil trees. Those are like my favorite. Because you can tuck those in in the smallest of places. Mm -hmm. Look at how many pieces I have. I have four, so 
So I'm going to look at, you know, where else can I add a piece or two? I think I have a couple places on the outside that we can squeeze in some more. Wow. So you guys are well on your way. Thank you for that. Because now when I tell Steve, I'm like, oh, look at everybody else put their tree up. I said, yeah, I have one up and one to do. So all that fall stuff is coming down. Us? Us? Yeah. 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 No. We the tree? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Normally I try to squeeze it up there before Christmas. Or so I said I bought a 9 foot 3, but I didn't think about having to decorate that thing. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. But you have so many creative ideas that you can add to that. Yeah, we actually downsized a couple years ago. We went from a 9 foot to a 7 and a half. Yes. So much nicer. And we went, well, because the other tree we had was one of the older Costco trees. So it was nine and a half feet, but it had a six foot base, which means that you had, it stuck out six feet in diameter everywhere. A massive tree. Massive tree. Oh, Linda, she said, uh, good evening, Dad. I just want to say it was nice to see your dad in church with you. Praise God. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. yeah we took the first time he's been to church in 57 years. So that is not an answer to prayer. Tracy said she put hers up last weekend. Nice. See? We are actually putting up my brother's tree next week, Thursday. We're going to go over and do a complete Christmas makeover in his house. Next week, Thursday. Yay. Mm -hmm. No, the weekend after. Sorry. The week after. Yeah, week after. week after. Okay. So let me show you this. I know, right? Yeah. See, look. So that's what it looks like now, right? Look at the debris field. It's crazy. Okay, so knowing that this is my top because that's where the plug is. So now we're going to start going in and doing some fun embellishments. So this is new to me, but I'm going to show you guys how fun this is. We're adding these giant tinsel candy canes. They are actually going to be the centerpiece for our wreath. Um, these are 32 and a half inches by six and a quarter inches. And these are going to do like a little crisscross in the middle. And it's like this, which means we're going to have to get really creative on how we cut the bottoms off. So they're going to kind of do a giant little crisscrossy thing right here, just like that. So we're gonna focus more on attaching them at the top. I'm not, we'll deal with that stuff at the bottom. Um, I am going to wire these in. Why? No one's gonna see them from 20 feet up, for one. And I need them to be able to stand up to the winds we get. We get yeah. 65 to 70 mile an hour winds. So I need, I think I need a longer piece for one. Um, we need something that can really stand up to whatever winds we're going to get. And those are going to start to come in Tuesday. Really, you're absolutely right. So we can take homes with their outside Christmas lights on already. I think people need something to cheer them up and look forward to whatever that's happening in our world. Yes. yes. Okay, so. Yeah, we got those at Walmart. What? Sorry, not Walmart. We got those at Hobby Lobby. Hobby uh, Lobby. Canes, yeah. yeah, Hobby Lobby candy canes. And these were $9.99, so 50% off. They're $5. And if they self-destruct next year, I don't care. They'll self-destruct. <laughs> we'll find something else to put up there next year. So, making sure my candy canes are crisscrossing at the right point. Oops. There we go. Right there. I just wanted to make sure I truly had them centered. Tracy, you were down in Southern California. In the desert. Okay. So, my whole goal is nothing can come loose. Um, we had that happen 
I think three times last year, I had some bows blow off our guard, our garland. But after we started to realize, hey, we have to really reinforce what we do here. It's not like wreath making where we can just, it's okay. We have to really reinforce these so that as the winds blow across the front, it's not going to dislarge any of the um, bows, ornaments, beads, balls, whatever we're going to put on here. So I'm just wrapping this right around the top, making sure it's somewhat even. I'm going to twist it a couple times, make sure I know where my plug is. We're going to cross this right over the top and then feed this all the way down to the bottom. On this wreath, there are still two large frames, one on the inside, one on the outside. So obviously I'm feeding this one down to the outer side. to make sure I hit those. Okay, so we've got our candy canes. They are crisscrossed. I wish they went around more smooth. Okay, got our crisscross candy canes. I'm not worried about the sticks because we are going to put a giant bow here. Um, I will cut them back just a bit so that they actually hit the frame and then I can um, wire these in to our frame. So probably right about here. Might actually need your help, Steve. I might have bit off more than I could chew. Let me try my other handy dandy ones. I don't even think these will go around here. Yeah, they might. No, I need your help. Okay. Should have cut these down, but um, right here, and then right here if you can. I don't know. It looks like it's just a wooden dowel though. Can you cut that? No. Let <laughs> uh, me see, are these bendable? I don't think so. I think they're sticks. Okay, let me get my big cut. He's going to go get the big cutters. While he's doing that, I am going to take my wire and reinforce the crisscross in the middle. So right where these are crisscrossed, I'm going to go up, twist, go down, twist, come up. Twist and then tuck this back down. So this way again, more ways to reinforce that. See all that? Yeah, I got five different ones. My loppers and <laughs> you think you'll be able to cut them off? Yeah, should be able to. Not sure. Are we gonna have to like do uh Dremel and just cut them off. I think it's. Oh, whatever that's made of, man, that's solid. It's wood. You can totally that's see the wood. very bottom. It's not wood. It's my wood. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I'll be right back. Um, what about. um? Put a marker. I will. I'll mark this for you. And then you just have to note everybody that. I'll have to have somebody cut them. Okay. I will cut these right here and right here. Okay, so. You want to go a little bit deeper? No, I just want these just okay. to hit here because we're going to do a bow here. Okay. You can't take those off. I wired them on. How do you expect me to cut them? <laughs> You're going to have to get the Dremel in. Um, what about, here's the thing the things that cut locks off the door, do we have one of those? A bolt cutter? A bolt cutter. Yeah, do you think that would work? That would have to be the uh, ultimate, this, right? This is an interesting challenge. I've never had anything that hard. 
Neither have I. So here's the thing. So um, when I bought these, these were originally intended to go on the wreath and on this garland that's going to go across the entire length of our garage on either side and then over our door garland up in the corners. So the fact that we're actually figuring this out with you will help me to tell you if you decided to cut these off, here's what you're going to need to use. I don't think in the bolt cutters will work fine. If they can cut through a lock, I should be able to cut through this. And it sounds like wood. Like it doesn't sound plastic. It sounds like heavy duty wood. So we'll see. It's coming back right now. Bolt cutters. Okay, the women aren't gonna have the hand strength of it, so we're gonna have to have Well, that's why I'm telling them. So, um, Right there. I'll hold. Good. There we go. So I'm going to be able to look at this and see. Hold on. I got that. Let's see what this is made out of. It's made out of metal. <laughs> metal. So these are meant to go in your ground. So, um, there you go. Thank you. And they came off. So dun, 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 you'll need a pair of bolt cutters to cut those if you want to cut them. Or you can just leave them long on, um, yeah, like hardcore metal. Um, that's what you're going to need to get them off. Bolt cutters. So I'm going to take all these yeah, other tools. Oh, yeah, that would be it. Or Dremel. I have to have a metal blade. Yeah. Like, would Dremel work on that, Steve? Oh, it would take a long time. The bolt cutters were the best. Bolt cutters were the best. So if you have bolt cutters, that would be great. I'm going to take these. Barbara said, yeah, it's like she had a hard time cutting the bottoms off of the poinsettias sticks. Oh, okay. The thick ones, yeah. Um, so I know that Deco Exchange sells some um, top of the line. I'm just gluing my ribbon back on. Um on both of these because they they're glued or not really glued to the stick um, they sell stem cutters I don't even know if that would have worked maybe I might have to come back and do a demo on that <clears throat> to see if those would work let's hope so because if so that's a huge saving thing for us so I'm going to twist these around and then secure these down to the bottom just so that we have some additional. Got it. So we just finished decorating our outside yesterday. I love this time of year. So do I. Next is the inside. The I'm problem. My outside wreath as well. Just took a break to watch, and you're doing the same thing. I'm like. The only bad thing about these is they are so thick. Um, I'm trying to find, oh, I'm trying to find it so I can pull it down to the bottom and make sure that I'm on opposite sides of that rail, <laughs> which I am. What? Bruce answered, you're very tall, Steve. <laughs> he is very tall. Six, three? Yeah. Yeah. Which is great when you need stuff up off those yeah. high shelves, right? I can just go, hey, can you reach that for me? Okay. So this is probably the hardest part, is just wiring these in. Like I said, if we didn't have high winds, um, I would be okay to just plop them in there, add a dollop of glue, and then we're good. Yep. But mm, no, I kind of don't want these to wind up on the East Coast somewhere. So if you see them coming in the air, uh, hopefully they're not. I'm trying to find my, I have it. There we go. Both sides. And then we can twist, twist, twist on this one. I have a really long branch hanging down. That's in my way. I'm 
really long branch that just needs to... Oops. Oh, I know what that one was for. I think that was one of your... Um, here's how I'm going to hang it. I'm going to take this really long branch and loop it around a screw. So. Yay, we're done. Okay. That's all in. That's all pretty. So we're going to, let me show you what this looks like. It doesn't look like anything really, honestly, right now. So I'm going to show you what this looks like for now. Oops. There you guys go. As I cut off my other ones. All good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's that. Picked up the whole string. And now I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, so we're gonna make the bow, because I'm gonna do the bow. Are we doing the bow at the top? We might do one at the top and one at the bottom. We're gonna start with the bottom one though. Do you think there should be one at the top? I don't know. I think the bottom because it'll kind of cover up the crisscross. Oh yeah, I already front. planned on that. Yeah. So let me get my ribbon, because they're sitting here, and I'm going to put this giant tree wreath. I have it on my cart. So it's just going to sit right there. And I know, that's what I told you. I said, wait, hold on, I got this. I have this. Yep, because ain't nobody going to be creative with all this here. So, um... We'll make sure all this goes away, right into the trash can. It'll probably look like this once I put that back up and we start adding even more stuff to it. Hang tight. I hate working in messy, messy area. If you thought that was bad, I do see the floor. I'll take pictures of the floor. <laughs> So you can see, literally, I was standing in a field of artificial pine needles. Okay, last bit. That's all gone. Super I'd simple. I'd that wreath is at least probably 15 years old. You think it's 15? Yeah. Well, I was thinking of, well, we didn't get it right when we moved in. <laughs> Sorry, <Yes>. man. <laughs> What's yeah, that? I uh, burnt the meat for dinner watching you guys while I cook dinner. What are they going to do? How are they going to cut it? No, that's real world stuff, right? Sorry. Okay. So I have chosen, because we're doing big and we're going outside, um, we're, we're doing all two and a half right down to two inch. So we have a two and a, two and a half inch red and white with a little fur edge from Sam's Club. If you have this ribbon, it's from Sam's. Um, we're doing a two and a half inch candy cane. Uh, crisscross. Gee, where can I get that idea? Um, this is from Michael's a couple years ago. We're also doing a red, white, and green with a thicker fur edge because those are the colors in our wreath. And then we're doing a two-inch uh, candy cane velvet stripe. And this is from Walmart this year. Walmart is now selling 30 feet of ribbon. So if you have these, um, you probably want to go snag those. And that's how we're, we're building our bow. Those are going to be our colors. So we're going to start here. Eat. We're going to probably have to go more than 10 inches. So let me go ahead and trim this up. Why are you? I know there's a giant mess there. I know that. Let me look at this. Um, I think we're going to go 12 inches because it's actually hanging from the bottom. So we're going to do 12 inches. So we are going to pinch in and then we're going to flip. We're going to add it to our bodabra and we are going to do six inch loops. So six inch twist, and then we'll measure. Uh, let's do six and a half. We're going bigger. So six and a half, and we're gonna do this four times. So we're gonna go two, and then we're gonna add another two on top of it. So we have a solid, um, 
a little bit more. There we go. And then we're going to do six and a half again. So this one's a little different than the bows we've made in the past. And trust me, if that ribbon can stand up to being outside in 10 years, we're good. And it held up, it wasn't droopy, just overly oversized. Um, did really well. Okay, 12 inches out. We're gonna cut dovetail. That's when you take your wired edges, you're gonna bring them together. You're gonna cut from the fold down to the pointed end, just like this. Okay, so there's that. There's that one. And now we're doing the cost, not Costco, Sam's Club. We're gonna do this one at 11 inches. So we're gonna bring it up just a little bit each time. So 11 inches in, we're gonna pinch, twist, and then we're gonna do these ones because these were six and a half, we're gonna do these at six. Same thing, we're gonna do double sets. So there's gonna be two loops on each side, six inches wide, or six inches, I guess wide. The loop size, six inches. So let's just make sure we get those done. Once you measure the first set, then when you come around to add your second set, all you have to do is put your finger in the bottom hole and pull. No need to measure because we already know the bottom ones are right at six inches. Da -da. Okay, out to 11 inches. So pretty with all that sparkle. Both of those are have their own fair share of glitter on them. Oops. Tuck that down just in case we need to make more. And then we're gonna do our candy cane stripe. Because we really need to emphasize that's the whole thing of our outdoor decor this year is, um, I guess it would be Peppermint Lane, right? Candy Cane Lane. And this will be 10 inches. Twist. And then we're going with five and a half inch loops. Five and a half inch loops. So the nice thing when you're a wreath maker and that's your business, when you start decorating your own home, your neighbors notice and then your neighbors come over and they ask, where'd you get that wreath that's on your thing? Or where'd you get your garland? I want to put garland on. And then that's where you um, have opportunity to share with them, hey, I can make that for you. For example, did I have that red, white, and green ribbon? Not sure why I crapped out of that discontinued it. It's so pretty. They change it every couple of years. Yeah. So I was gonna ask, uh, do you change your decor every year? Uh, this is the, last year was the first year we really went all out. Like, I mean, okay, not all out in the way of like yard decorations, all out in really decorating our home. Um, very candy cane classic, like we did the outdoor porch light. Um, we added wreaths to our coach lights on the side of our garage. Um, we added garland to the whole front part of our um, porch. We did it around our garage, um, around all the windows, huge garland. Huh? PVC gate. Yeah, we made a PVC gate so it looked like peppermint and created our own little fence. Um, added solar lights to that. So yeah, it's, it's kind of fun thinking outside the traditional decor. So these were um, 
we did six and a half, six. These are five and a half inch loops. And now we're gonna take it down with the two inch ribbon. These are gonna be five, and these are gonna be uh, nine inch tails. So a little bit shorter. These are what's gonna blow in the wind and probably set our, our alarms off thinking that there's somebody on the top of our house. So we'll have to get creative there. Um, okay, nine inches. So those are things to also consider when you're decorating your home is, you know, if you have security items, you want to definitely make sure you're not impeding those cameras with any of the things that you're putting up. So always check your camera locations before you make those a permanent fix. So nine inch tails, five inch loops, and then we're going to do it twice again so that we have a really big full bow, but only four ribbons. Last one. And then we'll add our tail, which is nine inches right here. Do our dovetail finish. That one over there. And then we are going to need, believe it or not, double uh, pipe cleaners because this is so thick. So I am crisscrossing these because I need them a little bit longer because this is a thick and deep wreath. So I just add my pipe cleaners right to the middle kind of crisscross and then just wind them in the middle to kind of reinforce where I've added that. We're gonna pick up the sandwich. We are going to bend and feed that through. And then we are going to twist, 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 twist. And make sure all that stays together because it's gotta stand up to the elements. Okay, the easiest way to do this one, probably because it's so big, we're gonna fluff it on the wreath. So I'm actually gonna put this on. And then, pull it. Look how thick this is. Mm -hmm. Oops. Okay. So we know we're going right in the middle of our candy canes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this Fed down to the bottom. There we go. And then we're gonna go in between our deco mesh so I can get it back down to the other side. I'm waiting to stab myself with a pipe cleaner. I got it. There we go. All right, we're in, and you need to make sure this one's tight because wins. So we need to pull all the tails down to the bottom because this is geared to be a bottom bow. So that's the first thing I'm doing, pull all the bows down, or all the tails down. Tails down. Barbara, her favorite bow maker is probably the bow dad left. It is. Size, um, a, the ability to do so many different things with it besides just making a bow. Mm -hmm. um, and it stores well for me. Okay, so all of our loops are at the bottom. We'll worry about the loops at the end. Let's get this one down. So we're going to take both of the your... We're starting at the bottom. We're gonna pull those apart like little X's. Pull these apart, okay? Then we're gonna take these and do the same thing, but in between those X's. So like here. Oops. And like that. Okay. And then we're doing the same with this. We're gonna go back to that pattern right here. Okay. 
to this one. And then same here. We are going right in the middle, right in the middle. And now we need to fluff everything, make it three dimensional. So the wind can move through it and attempt to rip it off our house, right? If only knew the winds we get. Mm -hmm. We used to tease our friends and say, if Mary Poppins and the umbrella theory were true, we could just open our umbrellas and get from here to their house, especially on those windy days. And I'll show you what this looks like because it's so high and you guys are just seeing it from the back view. Okay, let me show you. In between, in between. This is where good quality ribbon will make all the difference in the world in your designs. Just needed to find their proper home. And then our tails at the bottom. Kathy, this will be available for replay right after we finish the live and we'll also put it up on YouTube later tonight. There we go. And this one. So let me flip this around so you guys can see. takes three turns for me to get it down to where you guys can see it. Um, so let me lift this up so you can kind of see. I'll pull it back and forward. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Yep. Okay. So there's our bow. Still don't know if we need to add one to the top yet. Um, I'm going to go run and embellish, and if we feel like we need to, we can definitely add one to that. So what are we going to embellish it with? A lot. So that's why we have our glue skillet ready. Um, let me grab these real quick. So, what did they get these? Hobby Lobby is selling these uh, $29.99, half off, they're $15. You get 32 ornaments. And these ornaments, believe it or not, we bought strictly for the outside of our house. They always seal the entire lid all the way around with tape. So I'm only going to go halfway. Because we need all those colors. Okay, so we have red shiny, red glitter. I'm just going to plop them in the middle so they don't roll off. Um, the white with the red polka dots and white. So we're gonna start with those. Let's set these here. You guys know I like to pull these off because they will not stick to the, um, they won't stick. Like if I put um, pipe cleaners or ornament hangers through, um, what has a tendency of happening over time is your plastic pieces will come like you saw when I pulled the ornaments off the ornament hanger stayed in there so we're going to make these in nice little bundles all the way around the wreath um alternating red and white combos so I'm going to start here with my glue skillet so we're going to put our red in here okay and then we're going to add our white so we're going to add our balls first I want to make sure we're not dragging glue everywhere. And then I'm going to come up to our next section and alternate those colors and do white opposite the red with the glitter. Okay. I'm going to 
do it right in here. So I'm going to do red. And because I know this is going to be outside, I'm using a lot of glue to secure these down. So we're alternating the colors on our ornaments. I'm going to go down and add the same color here, a little bit lower. Take these off. Let's just open this so I can just throw them. So I'm going lower to meet my bow. So here's our white. And then we're going to do our red. Okay. There we go. I'm going to go to the opposite side and do the same that I've done here from the bottom half. So we're going back to these Oops. and our shinies, our glitters. Do these first. white on the inside. There we go. And then our red. You know those glue sticks still have not melted? Really? Yeah. I think I'll have to crank up the... I kind of did. I moved it up a little bit. Nah. He doesn't want to... He doesn't want to liquefy. There's that one. Sometimes you need to use your wire cutters to hold onto your knob mm -hmm. so you can pull those off. Sure, but yeah, you can. You can use a blow dryer to get rid of all the little blue mm -hmm. spider webs. Usually I just take my time. Yeah. And just, you know, because I take all this while the glue skillet is still hot and just throw it back in so it'll just remelt. Then we got two more glitters to go right before our candy cane. There's that. What do you guys think so far? I know it seems like we just started. Right in here. Okay, so I'm going to show you what we've done so far. Oh, there we go. Okay. Then I'm going to reuse the red ones that we had. So we're going to add these ones up towards the top. I'm going to incorporate these, I think, with a white and maybe white, red. Let's see. This one might be too, too white. We're going to mix it up so they're not exactly the same. So I'm going to do one red with two whites and one red with one red with a red and white. So it's like two reds, a white, and these are going above the candy canes in like a little trio. So there's one. Keep trying to get all of the threads in. There's this one. And then our red reuse. Right in the middle. So here's our little trio right there. Now we're going to do the other trio here. So we're going to 
add our red. This one off. There we go. And then our white. So the big balls are made to take up space and still kind of draw the eye all the way around in breaking up all the green color, just like so. So, I guess we answered the question, no bow at the top, right? Yep. Okay. So now, we have a couple of fun things that I found this year I've never seen before. So Hobby Lobby started carrying these, which are the big beads. So. You may have seen me use these on smaller versions. We're gonna add these to our design. Looks hard to cut too. Yeah, everything, because we went big. Yeah. These will take it and just go right through. Should have used those to begin with. There we go. This one. We have a couple little ones we can play with. You want to make these to where they're not static. So they're basically created on bendable pieces. So we are going to take these, let's see, it's so hard working on a wreath this big because it's so hard for you to see where you want everything to go. I think I'm going to tuck these in here. I have a total of two picks. So I'm going to put these in right here from the first set. I'll show you what we're gonna do on the other side. Uh, David, yes, yeah, pretty much he makes a uh, wreath for Christmas for the front door every year. Sometimes we put on wreaths and they sell and <laughs> we just pull them off. And... Well, we put it up one, two, three, four, five. Five wreaths go up on our front of our house. Yep. So there's this one that's gonna go over the garage there is another one that is, we do, lights. yeah, the two that go over the co the coach lights. We, um, is there something there you saw? Mm -hmm. Oh, my pick. Um, so two on the coach lights, one over the, the arch of the driveway, one on the front door, and we have a large pillar that goes in the front of our house, so we put one on the pillar. Okay, I like, I kind of like the way this is, this is going. Um, and I like where the placement of these is falling, and I'll show you. Because I'm kind of adding them to the outside. Let me put this one on. I can show you. So they're making like their own little statement. I need I have the other one too. There's one, two, three. So always make sure we pull them away from their their images so they look three-dimensional because they are meant to be that way. Big amount of glue. It's kind of weird how you have to tuck them in, but I'll show you what we're doing. This one looks so pretty. This one in. Okay. Another one right here. Gotta pull our price tag off, which is always fun. 
There we go. Three dimensional. Give it some movement. Okay, I'm looking at where I put the other one to make sure they're kind of lined up correctly. And then, did one of them, Steve, coincidentally happen to fall to the floor? Or am I just imagining? Uh, not, I? Not on this side. Okay. Nope. Just checking. I'm going to pop these big ones. I'm going to tuck these up in here. Because I just have two. So let me show you what those large beaded picks did. Making sure I didn't drop anything. Okay. This is what you see. Okay. Getting full, but not there yet. Getting full? <laughs> not there yet. Yeah, it is kind of full. Um, so I'm going to put in some smaller holes and then I have two candy cane picks. So this set of bulbs is all the same. These are $12.99 at um, Hobby Lobby. You get 12 pieces, so they're basically $6.50 each. Um, you can also get them red. Like these ones have like the little peppermint candy swirls at the bottom. These are just polka dots. So I'm going to kind of combo these both. And then these are what's called 60 millimeter balls. So these are about the smallest I think I'm using on here. There's that one. And there's this one. And now, because you can see it from all sides, we want to make sure that we're covering it from all sides. So now down here, I'm gonna take and use some of the spiral bottoms to kind of pop those looks. So I'm kind of tucking these around the outside, specifically. There's that one, and this one. We did spiral above the pig. And right in here. Because you're going to see all of that standing at the bottom of the driveway and looking up. Okay, we have another two. Remember, these are the only outside ones. Uh, the electric skillet is you can get on Amazon. It is a regular electric skillet, but uh, um, it's a six inch. Seven inch. Seven inch. Yeah. Seven is it inch. Sure bonder? No, it's else. not a sure yeah, bonder. So sure bonder made the original blue skillets. Right. These ones. Um, but subsequently, sure bonder stopped making them, and then there's a company that must have picked up the skillet design, because you can get this on uh, Amazon, and it's a seven inch glue skillet. Um, it's exactly what you see me using, but it comes with the lid, which is nice when you go to put that away. You don't have to worry about it um, being too hot or having someone come up and you know put their hand in it and it dries to a solid, so then once you turn it on, it liquefies again. Okay, now, we have these ones. We're gonna have a couple of these in. We need to add some more weight. So once again, 
these are $19.99 at Hobby Lobby. There are 24 pieces for one to junior half off. It's $10. And these are my favorite because these are more of your retro designs. So I'm going to use the ones that actually look like peppermints. And we're just going to add these to those trio bundles. This time a little bit smaller. Karen, yes, definitely. If if you bought just a plain 36 inch wreath, you want to put the lights on before you start decorating. Oh well, yeah. Because you will be regretting the decision that you didn't do it earlier. So yes, mm -hmm. lights first. Always lights first. David said she was at the Hobby Lobby yesterday and they reached out to all their picks. It's hard to find those. Did you, were you able to find them online? Or um, the banner still available? I know we found some that were totally opposite. What did it say? They weren't the same ones that we used. It said Merry Christmas. The, the, the first ones? Yeah, there's something else. I can't remember what it was. See, so I'm adding Same. stuff that looks like peppermint candies in here. Uh, Richard, yeah, the settings at three quarters. It has like a quarter, half, three quarter, and then full setting. The way I do it's it about three quarters. is go all the way to the end and then go up one line. So I go up one line from being all the way up. Okay. So I'm just adding these so they kind of look like peppermint candies. Cheryl, what I'll do with this one is because it's actually going to be um, Put up. above our garage. Uh, I will go get what's called a um, stucco uh, anchor screw and it will drill into the stucco um, and it holds really well. Okay, a couple more and then So these are 70 millimeter bowls. They're just a touch bigger, but I'm just adding these. Like I said, you have to, for us especially, I would just make it a habit. You want to always make your designs as though it was going to go up in Chicago, the Windy City, so that it can handle all those extremes. I think I will put one little ball right in the center. So I'll use one of my little spiral balls. And this is exactly what I bought these ornaments for, was this design and then adding to uh, anything that we had um, created before. Oh, look, I would like that because it matches the ribbon perfectly. Okay, so I have two candy canes, two small ones. So let's see if we can find them at home. Because there was only these two left out of um, everything that Hobby Lobby had. Um, so let's see. Look how cute that would be. Make a little heart. But... This is where you almost wish you were so tall you could look over and uh, kind of oversee this. I think I'm going to add one to each side of my bow. I like the way that looks. Um, I need to wire them in though. And then we'll be pretty much done. So Super simple. You didn't have it before, have to put your name, you uh, it. Yeah, we do. We will yeah. because we have done the before. I you always need that. Yeah. yeah. So we posted, hey, here's a picture of this god awful hideous wreath that we're going to be redoing tonight. So I am making these to where they face the inside. There are so many different embellishments that you could add to a candy cane design uh, for a wreath. And like I said, once you see all of the other things we add to the outside, it's kind of like it's fun. 
like we'll give you some tips on how to do some different home decor. Like I'll, we'll show you how we use the PVC pipes and red duct tape to make a candy cane fence that borders our entire sidewalk up to our house. So I'm gonna tuck this in here because it's the perfect place for it. I just have to find the wire. Uh, Richard, for the low temp views, the great thing about the glue skillets is you can pretty much customize it how you want it. Kat likes it to where it's just melted enough to where she can use it and the glue sets up pretty quick. And, you can adjust it higher or lower. and if you happen to grab it by mistake, it's warm. Like right. it's not, it's not it's scalding hot. But it's hot. Not burning hot right? I mean, if I put my hand in there, it would be hot enough, but by the time you pull it out and uh, kind of wave it around a couple times, um, it's fairly cool. Hot enough to secure things, not hot enough to burn. So there's one candy cane. It's gonna be fun to put up on that door. Let's hope the door holds. <laughs> oh, like we've never, that's a 36 inch door, so it's really going to, um, it's gonna dwarf the door. So it's not going on the door. It's not going on the door, no. It's going above our garage. So, let me, um, trying to find my wire. There we go. Trying to lead it down to the bottom. There's that one. And then, thanks. Okay, I gotta try to find the other side. Almost there. Yes. So much cords on the back of here from the lights. She goes, yeah, that can't happen. She's had a, I had a glue on a half a styrofoam ball and I had to fix it. It slipped off and glued itself in my hand today. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, I know what that's like. Steve knows what that's like. A lot of glue, yeah, that it can lift and go. Yeah, he knows. He's done that a couple times. But mainly with the glue gun. Mm, yeah, so that's why. Low temperature glue gun. Okay, let me show you what this looks like. Um, I'm going to try putting it up on the door. I'm going to hope and pray that the door does not tip. Um, let's pop this right here. Hope and pray it doesn't bend the screw. Yeah, <laughs> right? Because it is extraordinarily heavy. Okay. Yeah, I just about got it. There we go. It's a little high on the left side, but it's fine. What? On that side, it's a little high, but that's fine. Yeah, it looks I mean, good. here's my plug. Yeah. So I got it on there the best that I can because it is so thick and full. I was thinking it's not even going to hit the door. It's not even going to hit the nail because it's so far out there. But yeah, I mean, there we go. I will probably, I might come in and put in a little bow in here, just like a little one. Mm -hmm. Let me look. I might need an inch and a half. Let me try I think this. it's going to go up high, so I'm going to be doing it like this. It bugs me. <laughs> it bugs me. Just like all the greenery on the table. So let's try making a little one. Let's do that. This twist flip. Thank you, Richard. You said it looks so nice after the redo. Well, it definitely looks better than it did, which is our goal, right? To make it oh, look she better. She was using a glue gun. Who? Cheryl was using a glue gun when she glued that styrofoam ball. Is she really? Yeah. Ooh, hang on a second. Now I think about that. Let me do this really quick. Let me dovetail it. 
me a lick first before I do it. You can add that right back. We will zip tie that right to the center. You know, so you could just put an ornament right there too. With an ornament and a tie So there's the little bow. I think if you were to put an ornament there, A, you'd have to get wired to the stem. Like a bigger red one or something. Like that? A bigger red one. Like this? Yeah. Or like that. Stuff to do, huh? Um, no, actually, not at all. Yeah. Mm -mm. Okay. Do you like that look? Uh, somebody just suggested it. You could put an ornament there. I kind of like that look better. Your um ornament idea. Yeah. And I think I want not this one. It's kind of be sticky. The color. I think I would go with that because it's got the the mm -hmm. texture. Which, super simple, we will wire this in. Just like so. It's like I don't want to make any suggestions. What? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. you got mad at me last time. <laughs> yeah, after we finished our live on Sunday, Steve started making all kinds of suggestions. He's like, well, do you think you should move the banner over a little bit? And I was like, okay, for you, I'll move the banner. And then it's like, once we move the banner, it was like, then the deer is in the way of the words in the banner. Then you have to move the deer. And then it's just like, oh, it became such a complicated nightmare. I was like, not doing that anymore. How's that in you do? Can you move the bow up? Huh? You can move the big bow up, too. I am tipping. It can, so that sucker is huge. <laughs> we, yeah, well, it's a garage wreath. Yeah, it's, it's a garage wreath for a It's not the front door wreath. But there you go. So yes, there you go. Ornament right in the center. I'm actually going to come in and glue it with yeah. the wire so it it doesn't wobble back and forth. But mm, there you go. Um, there is all of our deco mesh in here. Go ahead and pull this in. So we get some of that mesh in. Here's all our glue. What do you guys think so far? You know, considering that we didn't really pay for the base to begin with, it was a recycled, mm -hmm. um, and we didn't really put a ton of materials in it. One roll of deco mesh, mm, handful of ornaments, uh, two really super big berry picks, the two candy canes, make the bow, done. It's already got the lights on it. It's all, um, Ready to be lit. Oh, that's interesting. Somebody said do a, like a cluster of three, almost like a hidden Mickey. Oh, in the center? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We haven't glued it yet, so just know maybe really. something could do. Just Let's... That's a big reason why I'm late. No worries. No worries, Mel. No. Um, so look. So we will give you kind of a little bit of a preview. Even though you guys are going to see the cord. I can't really do much to that. But you guys had asked, can, I mean, obviously this gets hidden up there, but I wanted you guys to see how well that does stay right. lit. Yeah. Give you I'll be able to hide the lines once it's up above the garage. I'm like, wait, can I hide this so you could not see the cord for now? David <laughs> said, love it, might do a drive-by to see your lights. What if you do stop by? Who? Debbie. She remember she lived down in the rancho area. You should come up, Debbie. Um, so there you guys go. It's super cute, super simple. Yes, it's kind of off. It needs to be turned like this a little bit. But the fact that I was able to actually secure it to a um, Hook. screw Hook. on the door and not have the door fall over due to the weight is a bonus. So I like it. It's definitely better than the look that we did. So it's just to show you what you can do. Remember that this stuff is going to weather, so it's going to be outside in the elements. It's uh, It won't be in direct sunlight, 
um, but it's subject to the wind, the rain, um, hopefully snow this year. I'm always hopeful for snow. Um, and there you guys have it. Any questions you guys have? Nope. Nothing? All right, guys. Well, thanks great. for joining me. Thanks for helping me give me some feedback and some ideas. And um, you guys private knew. Group. Oh, yeah, private group. If you want to join the private group, can't see it at the bottom of the door, but it's castcreationsandmore.com. If you guys want to come join us, um, we're launching our Secret Santa starting on Monday, which is just for private group members. But if you want to get two additional tutorials every week, in addition to the Friday and Sunday, come join the private group. Um, you can do a uh, monthly, you just want to try it out a month at a time, or you can sign up for the full year. We're going to be launching some great benefits starting in January. You won't want to miss. So have a great weekend, everyone. And I'll touch base with you on Sunday at six. Bye everyone.